the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And we invite you to like us on Facebook, The Voice Crying in the Wilderness, where you can go there and download any of the messages that you hear. And you can also go to our email at avoc2019 at gmail.com or go to our website at the voice of one crying in the wilderness dot com and there you can request a message to be emailed to you. Our speaker is Brother Spencer Scott. So the next voice that you will hear giving us our opening prayer and our message will be that of Brother Scott. Brother Scott. You'll bow your heads with me or kneel as you can. We'll we'll open in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the privilege of being able to open our eyes and see today. Lord, to realize the the beauty that you have placed all around us in this sin-ridden world. To see the sunshine and the trees and the green and the life and the birds all around us. Lord, we thank you for this for this blessing. Lord, and for another opportunity to to have to draw close much closer to you, to have time to read your word, to contemplate our pathway, Lord, and to make, with your help, a stronger reserve and a resolve to obey you and to do the things that please you, Father, and to reach out to others and to share the blessing of knowing you. We're asking as we open your word that you would grant us understanding, Father, and then also the ability to retain what we've heard and what we've read, so that moment by moment, day by day, it impacts our decisions, and it impacts how we live. Please unite our heart with your word. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. I'd like you to open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 24. Proverbs 15, verse 24. The Bible says the way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from the hell beneath. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. The method of and the plan of how we live, our style of living, the, the, our procedure and the steps that we follow, the way of life. The Holy Spirit is telling us it's above to those that are wise, that we may depart from hell beneath. We can't miss how heaven characterizes this earth, the hell beneath. First John chapter 2 and verse 16 tells us that all that is in the world is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And of course, when we consider all, there's nothing left. Do we really look at things like that? Do we look at the world that we live as heaven characterizes it? as the scripture has modeled the things around us. Matthew chapter 25, if you turn there, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. The Bible says, Then the kingdom of heaven, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Let's consider carefully this parable and what 
our Savior is endeavoring to say to us. Let's look at a part of this parable because it's too there's there's too much to deal with in just the short time that we have. But let's direct our our attention to the wise virgins. But as we begin, let's turn our attention to Matthew chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Matthew chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. The Bible says, These things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Without a parable, Christ determined that he was not going to speak to the people. But in doing so, in sharing and in his ministry, the promises to us that he would utter things that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. When we look at the, at the record that was left through the apostles of Christ's time in his ministry, do we look at it in that fashion, looking for the treasures that Christ promised that he would utter things and it was prophesied that would that had been kept secret from the foundation of the world. He would share things with us. In the Testimonies, Volume 4, page 489, God's servant writes, The Bible requires thought and prayerful research. It is not enough to skim over the surface. While some passages are too plain to be misunderstood, others are more intricate, demanding careful and patient study. Like the precious metal concealed in the hills and the mountains, its gems of truth are to be searched out and stored in the mind for future use. Oh, that all would exercise their minds as constantly in searching for celestial gold as for the gold that perishes. Have you ever been curious to know what the lives were like of, of people that lived in different places? Ever wondered you know, what they do and how they go about what they do on a daily basis? Matthew chapter 25 and verse 1 is almost like a question was asked and Christ was answering the question when he said, The kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins. The kingdom of heaven. The people that are alive now and will live and profess to acknowledge and follow the Creator, Christ declares that his kingdom is like ten virgins. Five of those ten virgins were wise. And it's the pattern of the wise virgins that we must follow. In Christ's Object Lessons, page 407, she writes, two classes of watchers are represented, two classes who profess to be waiting for the Lord. They are called virgins because they profess a pure faith. In Matthew chapter 25, it tells us that these wise virgins took their lamps now, all the virgins knew intellectually that they would need lamps because there was a possibility of seeing nightfall, which meant a delay. However, it was not just an intellectual understanding or more information or just another message or a sermon or a statement for the wise virgins. It was not just something intellectually they knew. It was deeper than that. Just like the Bereans, they studied the possibility and knew for certainty that there would be no other way. The darkness would demand lamps that were tested and lamps that were proven. They knew that they must know the integrity of their lamps very well and that the light of their lamps must shine brightly. By faith, the wise prepared for the darkness. And they knew that there could be no issues with their lamps. They could have no problems, no breakdowns, no, no issues. The wise checked and prepared and tested and improved every detail of their lamp. The wise knew their lamps. Just as in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1, Adam knew Eve and they bare, and she conceived and bare Cain. The Bible says, I have gotten a man from the Lord. The wise knew their lamps. As Psalms 119, 105 tells us that the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The wise 
The five wives also knew that the bridegroom would be subject to come at the darkest hour, where only the bright, shining light of their lamps would provide passage in the darkness and in that procession that was to gather. Their lamps would provide a safe placement for their feet as they moved along. As they approached the wedding, it would be a light unto their feet. The wise virgins knew also that the bridegroom would purposely come at night at a time that would really reveal who his true friends were because only his true friends would wait in readiness for him. The wise virgins knew the bridegroom and they knew they needed lamps with oil and an additional supply of oil in their vessels. When we consider lamps, filled with oil, what what are we talking about? What does that mean? If the light, the lamp, is the word of God, is the Lord telling us that in the study of our of the word, is the Most High telling us that in, there must be a constant attendance of the Holy Spirit illuminating the understanding and fixing the purposes? It must be that way. The lamp, the word, filled with oil, always attended, burning brightly with oil. John 3.33, the Bible says that he has received, he that has received this testimony has set in his seal that God is true. Those that are needing and craving for an understanding of God's word desiring the light, are receiving the testimony, receiving the word of God, and setting it to their seal, locking it in. This is truth. As Psalms 107, verse 43 says, Whoso is wise will observe, so watch carefully and come to realize and know through consideration that these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Those who are wise will observe, and they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. The wise went forth with their lamps. Matthew 25, verse 1 also tells us that they, they went, gathering their lamps, they went forth. They went out to meet this wedding party. This event took center stage, and there was nothing else that would take them off their purpose to be there. They were prepared to wait in readiness for as long as it took the bridegroom to come. The why? They went forth prepared and ready to meet the bridegroom. There was a determination and a plan. Hebrews 11, chapter 24, tells us that Moses, when he was come to years, 24 and 25 of chapter 11 of Hebrews, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction of the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. There was a purpose and a determination, deciding and planning and living so it will be possible to be with the bridegroom was above everything else. Determination marked the five wise virgins. They took their lamps, they went forth, and they went out to meet the bridegroom. But it took a knowledge of the bridegroom, as we mentioned earlier, to make proper preparations. This is something that the wise did. They were secure, all the virgins were secure in one thing, at one level or another. They knew that the bridegroom was getting married, and they knew that he would be coming. But the five, the wise went, they took it to their heart. In Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 3, Paul says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. This was not the case with the five wise virgins. Their personal experience and understanding and knowledge of the bridegroom caused them to trust his word and gave them an unwavering faith in his character. 
The Lord's servant says that Christ honored the marriage relation by making it also a symbol of the union between him and his redeemed ones. He himself is the bridegroom. The bride is the church of which, as his chosen one, he says, Thou art all fair. My love, there is no spot in thee. The wise virgins, no spot in thee. A living experience in the word, testing and proving, obeying God's word, and having an intimate friendship and love with the bridegroom is represented by the five wise virgins. Their purpose was to have no spot in them, prepared to meet the bridegroom. It said that a lamp, those that, there are many oil type lamps, and as you research the lamps that were made during that time, and there were many different styles of lamps. But for instance, today, a typical oil lamp burns about a half an ounce of oil per hour, which a lamp will burn today from 60 to 120 hours. This would equate two and a half to five days of burning. But the ancient lamps were different sizes, some a bit smaller. They were some larger, some clay made of metal. They would burn nine hours or longer. But I'm wondering, how many of you, how many of us, would I, me, would I be willing to wait outside of an location where a wedding was to occur, that I had been invited by a close friend? Without any contact, would I be willing to wait for nine hours or longer and just wait? Hour one goes by, two, three, four, five. How many would keep waiting because they know the bridegroom is coming? They know the wedding is going to happen. How many of us would continue to wait for a day, 24 hours, continue to wait? In mercy... What is the Lord saying to us about the faith that we're going to need, that we need to pass through the darkness, to pass through the delay? The wise virgins are waiting for what seemed like to others, through the eye of faith, something hopeless, something that wasn't going to happen. God's servant writes, they saw in... They saw that the prophetic periods reached to about 1844 and that the same evidence which they had presented to show that the prophetic periods closed in 1843 proved that they would terminate in 1844. Light from the word of God shone upon their position and they discovered a tarrying time. Though it, the vision, tarry, wait for it. In their love for Christ, immediate coming, they had overlooked the tarrying of the vision, which was calculated to manifest the true waiting ones. Again, they had a point of time. It was so in the past with those that were waiting in anticipation of Christ's return. But there was a tarrying time. We are passing through that time now. Are we going to be the faithful and the wise servant? who continued about his master's business, busy, occupying, doing what the master had instructed while waiting. Remember Hebrews 11 and verse 7, where the Bible says, By faith Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir to the righteousness which is by faith. In Christ Object Lessons, page 414, she writes, The coming of the bridegroom was at midnight, the darkest hour. So the coming of Christ will take place in the darkest period of this earth's history. The days of Noah and Lot pictured the condition of the world just before the coming of the Son of Man. Satan will work with all power and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. As 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 and 10 tells us, His working is plainly revealed by the rapidly increasing darkness, the multitudinous errors, heresies, delusions, 
of these last days. Not only is Satan leading the world captive, but his deceptions are leading the professed churches of our Lord Jesus Christ are leavening their leavening the professed churches of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only is Satan leading the world captive, but his deceptions are leavening the professed churches of our Lord Jesus Christ. The great apostasy will develop into darkness deep as midnight, impenetrable as sackcloth of hair. To God's people, it will be a night of trial, a night of weeping, a night of persecution for the truth's sake. But out of that night of darkness, God's light will shine. The question is, will our lamps be full of oil? And will we have oil to carry through the tarrying time? Oil to carry through the waiting time to keep the lamp shining and burning. We understand that the the enemy's work will be subtle. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible tells us that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. More subtle. And when you look up that word, it tells and it speaks about a change or distinction so delicate or so precise that it's difficult to analyze or describe. Something so delicate, so precise, but it is error. Almost too difficult to describe, but there was a word that the Lord's saints heard behind them saying, this is the way. This is the way, walk ye in. Things will seem so logical. The delusions in the air will seem so practical. But the precision in the error will be Tremendous. Only the light of the Holy Spirit will make the glaring distinction between the two choices. We can't miss that. Today we are being called to be as the wise, peculiar. Peculiar, extraordinary in determination, extraordinary in our faith, extraordinary, faithful, in our study, and not just reading, but crying out to the Lord for understanding, panting after the Almighty for wisdom. The scripture tells us that if we commit our works unto the Lord, he will establish our thoughts. If I dedicate what I'm doing, the work of my hands, if I dedicate What I do to the Lord, he's promised to build up day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, year, build up, establish our thoughts. If If we acknowledge him, if I acknowledge him in all my ways, he will direct my path. The wise, the wise virgins, do we want direction? It's already been told us in Matthew 24, 24, that there shall arise false Christ, persons that are claiming to be anointed of the Most High, and they shall deceive many, and false prophets, persons that have not heard the word of the Lord, but they are proclaiming a word from the Lord, false prophets that shall rise up and they will deceive many. Only oil-filled lamp will be able to sort out the difference. The lamp must remain filled with oil. We're told in Great Controversy, chapter 622, verse, page 622, 4. It's almost a memory statement to us that we shall need an experience which we do not now possess and which many are too indolent to obtain. The wise are not indolent, but we do. We need an experience that we do not now possess. It's like the song that says, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Plant my feet at a place that I have not yet known. Put my feet on higher ground. The question is, how much oil do we want? It's available as much there is no there is no restriction to oil. 
There's no limit to the oil. The limiting factor is our desire and our crying out for it. The scripture tells us that only until we come with all of our heart. When you search for me with all of your heart, then, and only then will we find him. The wise were not lacking oil. I want to encourage us to follow the example of the wise. It's the only way that we'll get off this planet. It's the only way that we will see the master in peace. We must choose a godly lifestyle in the meekness of wisdom to be counted as a wise version. Our dependence, our strength is only in the most high. Considering the pit that we were dug from. Those who exercise but little faith now are in the greatest danger of falling under the power of satanic delusions. And the decree to compel the conscience and even, even if they endure the test of the decree that will compel the conscience, even if they endure the test, they will be plunged into deeper distress and anguish in the time of trouble because they have never made it a habit to trust God. The lessons of faith which they have neglected, they will be forced to learn under a terrible pressure of discouragement. That's the great controversy. Page 621, paragraph 3. The Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is wisdom. The fear of the Lord is understanding. It's by the fear of the Lord that we are given instruction, a respect, an acknowledgement. The Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6, Ecclesiastes 2 and 26, the Bible says, For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy, but to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. The Lord gives wisdom. <laughs> By God's grace, we will stay at his table. We will stay before the Lord. We will to receive all that God would give us. Let's contemplate the seriousness of being encountered amongst the wise. That's that's, that's the message for this evening. The, The focus and thought, may God help us, to choose to be amongst the wise. Amen. Thank you, Brother Spencer, for that. You know, I've I've heard the message, you know, many times on the ten versions, and regardless of how many times um, I've heard it, there is always something new, uh, something um, different that that. Um, the speaker brings out that I learned. So I, I thank you uh, very much for sharing. And I know uh, everyone else along with me is striving to be one of the five. Okay. Um, if you would share your contact information with our callers and... Um, I do know that, I don't know if you're still doing, you know, the the gardening part, the mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the classes and everything, and share mm-hmm. that with our callers as well. Okay. You can, you can find us um, on unstoppable, unstoppablegardening.com. Um, we, sessions that we do twice weekly, um, and there's more that's there's 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 more that's coming, but but that's how you can that's how you can reach out to uh, you can reach reach out to us through un, through unstoppable gardening. Um, if there's questions uh, or otherwise, it's um, we can we've got an 800 number that that can that 
that you can reach us on, you'll find it on our website. So just, yeah, just, just reach out to us. By God's grace, buy that oil. Keep the lamp filled with oil. That's, that's our duty. That's our privilege. So that when we meet other people, when we intersect others, we have a message, a little preacher in our pocket. We have a word in our mouth the Holy Spirit can, can, can share because it, 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 it's so critical now in this time of COVID, if you please. The world is gripped in fear there are so many that are scared to death in the church unfortunately and out of the church our faith is being tested today and we should resolve either either god is able to keep us or he's not either we will have an assurance and faith that he will keep us and even if it's the lord chooses otherwise We will not bend in our integrity and our understanding of the principles that that the Lord has given us. But if if others can't get a word from us, who will they get it from? If they can't hear from those that have had an experience with God, that have tried his promises, that have tested his promises, and know know them to be sure, who else will they go? Where will they get it? If God is giving us breath, if he's giving us strength, every morning, are we cumbering the ground or are we bearing the fruit that is so, so, so needed at this time and will be continued to be needed because this is only going to increase unless God would hold this evil back? Amen. Amen. You can dial 712 Seven seven five seven zero eight nine. Same pin code to use to call in here. Pin code five 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 one four five um, pound. And you can hear this message again. Share it with others as well. Or if you desire to have it in a hard copy, uh, you can send to. Our P.O. box there, and um, you can request it to uh, a hard copy to be sent to you. And our P.O. box number is 8441 Laverne, and that's L A V E R N E, California, 91750 8441 with a donation of $5 for each CD to cover the cost of shipping and materials and make your money orders or checks payable to Vaughn Williams. And we want to thank um, all of those that unite with us daily, praying for this ministry, all the ministries connected with it, and really, truly, all of God's servants that are out there working in the vineyard. And we want to thank all of those that have united with us uh, to support these ministries on a regular basis or as God has provided you with. And I'd like to stop for a moment now to say thank you to all of our callers that are on the callback, those across the United States, and those that are in other countries as well. We want to thank you for stopping to take time out of your day to hear the message that God has for his people in these last days. If you're desiring uh, or have a prayer request, you can send that to our email address. You can post that on our Facebook page, or you may text Or call Sister Jackie at 773-415-1562. Again, that's 773-415-1562. And in closing, amid discord and strife, a voice was heard from the wilderness, a voice startling and stern, yet full of hope. Repent 
for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Desire of Ages, page 104. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone again tomorrow. Sister, before you sign off, let's close in prayer, okay? Okay, thank you. I... Our gracious and kind and merciful and loving Heavenly Father, Lord, as we can move out forward into the week, Father, we're asking for the constant attendance of your Holy Spirit at every step, every thought, every decision that we make. Help us to keep your face, your, an understanding of your presence always, conscious in our minds and before us for the purpose of knowing that you're there and your attendance to help us in our decisions to care for us in the things that we do the difficulties we may be in and the protection that you will give us father keep us with a consciousness of you help us to be alert to those that need what only you can provide. Help us to be willing to impart that to others. Keep amongst us the little preachers to share the light to share with others. Father, the world needs to know who you are. And we need to understand you better and better each day. Bless us, please, to this end. We're asking and we're thanking you for all the blessings. But we're asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Someday.